ho, 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 is a rather perplexing thing, I think, to say this time of year. After all, we have not even begun Advent. Let us have our fill of these fearsome apocalyptic readings, and once they have had their course when our conscience is clear, we can celebrate Christmas with a heart full of joy and hope. Alas, I consider myself mistaken. We should not be so grouchy or Grinch-like. After all, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so, when we stress the differences between the first and the second coming, we must not let that obscure their similarities in this season in which we read these fearsome texts. The Church anticipates the second coming in order to prepare us for the first coming of Christ at Christmas. They are not two distinct seasons that would smack of dualism. Rather, the similarity between both comings is this. In both comings, Christ delivers judgment, and this judgment is love. St. Paul puts it like this, God in his mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, when we were dead through our sins, made us alive together with Christ. This is judgment because it delivers us justice. It sets us straight with God, and God does this by restoring to us what we had lost and could not of ourselves regain, that is to say, right relationship with him. God's judgment is his word, written in flesh and blood, hung high, spelt out on the cross for all of us to see. There were signs in the sun and the moon when the sky was darkened on the day of his crucifixion. The powers of the heavens trembled with fear when the veil of the temple was rent in two, and nations were at war and vengeance was wrought on them when the Son of Man, victorious on the cross, trampled down the reign of Babylon, the kingdom of Satan and sin. In all these things, he bids us to be of good cheer, as he said the night before he died, I have overcome the world. Not only does Jesus Christ come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He calls us sinners in order that he may call us friends. The first coming is God's judgment upon the world. It is the offer of his friendship to us in love. Now is our chance to accept this offer and to live it out so that at the second coming, we may return our acceptance of this offer to God. As John of the Cross says, in the evening of our life, we will be examined on love. In the first coming, God lets us see himself as we are, suffering the consequences due to our sin, so that at the second coming, we may see him as he is. Raise your heads high, for your redemption is at hand. Our redemption, the end, is in fact already here. It is already begun. After all, the reason we ponder these apocalyptic, these fearsome readings, is the same reason for which we celebrate Christmas. It is because we are looking forward to the morning of our resurrection when it will never be night again. Our redemption is at hand. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people and redeemed them.